Hey guys, it's Ocean. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And dami pa rin nagtatanong sa akin, lalo na sa mga comment section, paano ba mag-shift to data science? Uh, how to be a data analyst? Ano ba yung mga steps na dapat kong gawin? Let's get into it. I will answer some of your questions. So I listed down 10 questions that came from the comment section of my YouTube channel. Yung iba dito nasagutan ko na eh. Actually most of yeah, most of them nasagutan ko na, nagreply na ako sa kanila. But I wanted to make a video so that I'd be able to share the answers to all of you guys. I also want to apologize in advance because right now it's raining, pero hindi ko alam kung rinig sa video. But I hope my voice is still audible. So yeah, let's get into it. So the f so the first question is from Nocturnal, and he asked if yung seri focus po ba job guaranteed daw and ask ko lang if ma graduate. If maka graduate ka sa course nila at makapag work as a data analyst, how much po mga starting salary? Okay, so for those who don't know what Refocus is, so Refocus is an online academy or an online school that teaches data analysis, data science for their students. I'll be honest with you, I don't know anything about Refocus, so hindi ako nag-aral sa Refocus. I don't know anyone in Refocus, but I know some people who are studying in Refocus. I, I haven't gotten any feedback about Refocus yet, pero yung marirecommend ko na alam ko talaga, na sure ako na makakatulong sa mga students is a company or a startup called Esquelabs. Which, by the way, I'm not sponsored by Esquelab. This is something that I am promoting. Kasi sure ako na, mak na makakatulong talaga sila sa inyo. I have colleagues right now who are graduates of Esquelab. So what Esquelabs does is that they provide boot camps. Um, so usually these boot camps are like months. And usually after that boot camp, meron kayong parang capstone project. Tapos yun yung parang magiging part ng portfolio ninyo. Ang maganda sa Esquelabs is that Esquelabs do partner with other companies, you know, na kapag kunwari, naka-graduate yung mga students nila from the bootcamp, pwede sila mag-apply directly dun sa mga companies na yun. And I believe that's what Refocus is also doing. They also partner with companies and then tinitrain nila yung mga students nila to become data analysts or data scientists or data engineers or machine learning engineers. And then, yeah, again, they then they refer their graduates to these companies. For the salary, honestly, depende talaga sa company at depende sa market. Pero guys, ako lang naman to, personal opinion, wag kayong papayag na less than 30,000 pesos as of 2022 ang sahod din nyo if papasok kayo sa tech company. Even lower than 35, I guess. I'm saying this not gross, ha? Kasi parang ang baba talaga and... Wala, parang hindi makatarungan kung nasa 30k. Pero, yeah, but still, it depends on the job description, it still depends on the market, and still depends on the company and what you're going to do. Okay, the next question, the, our second question is from Alex Roque. And he asked if, Sir, ask ko lang kapag zero knowledge sa data analyst, anong dapat gawin? I actually made two or three videos already related to data science. You can check them out here. Yung isa doon, nag-share ako kung paano ako nakapag-shift into tech. Maybe you can try to get some insights from there, Alex. I also shared five tips on how you can shift or do a career shift to data science. And maybe you can also check it out. Pero yung main gist nito is that kailangan mo talaga mag-aral kung hindi mo alam kung paano mag-code. Have at least like the basic principles or the basic foundations of you know, doing statistics, what is analysis, then doing math and stuff like that. And sometimes talaga, logic skills ang kailangan mo on these things. Ni pala sometimes, really, most of the time or all the time. Next question is from TikTok Finds. Ask ko lang din po pala, need pa po ba dumaan as data analyst before becoming a data scientist? Okay, I wanted to make some clarifications on the term data scientist. I believe that the title data scientist, ako lang naman to, is a bit misused on some cases. Because for example, is a data engineer not already considered a data scientist? Wherein in fact, he's also doing, you know, science stuff with data, but on a different method. And still, you know, by the definition of science, you know, it's like a body of language and data engineering is using technology as an application of science, diba? So, hindi mo na ba siya matatawag na data scientist? How about yung mga data analysts? Wherein, in fact, they analyze data, they crunch numbers, hindi mo na rin ba sila matatawag na data scientist? So, yeah, and I believe in some paradigms that term data scientist is trying to be exclusive only to people who do machine learning, wherein in fact, I believe that it's not. So if you mean that in your question, if you wanted to be someone like a machine learning 
consultant or machine learning researcher or machine learning engineer if do you have to be a data analyst it doesn't have to be but it helps mas maganda yung magiging foundation mo when you start doing data analysis first before studying machine learning and even data engineering i recommend but it's not really required the next question is from daniel noveno novino hindi ko alam kung tama yung pronunciation ko but from daniel Hello! Just wanted to ask if you find boot camps like Esquelabs and were focused for data analyst or data science worth it, especially for a career shifter, or does Udemy courses or Coursera enough? Thank you. My short answer here is yes, pero kung gusto, mas gusto mong mag venture on doing Udemy courses, Coursera, it's still just the same. Different learning curve and different learning path. So it really depends on you. But both tracks. Honestly, they're fine. If you wanted to go to Esquire Labs or Refocus, then go ahead. But if you want to take the track of Udemy or Coursera, then go ahead as well. It really depends on your level of comfort. Because there are other students that are more comfortable on doing classes on themselves, like yung mga online classes, unlike yung mga Refocus and Esquire Labs, na mas interactive yun because you have classmates there. You have online classmates whom you need to work with them in order to make like a project. So, yeah, it really depends on you. Okay, the next question is from The Saddest. Hi, I just started working as a data analyst and planning to pursue my career. I would like to ask if what app should study first after I mastered S Excel. SQL or Python? Thank you. Both, actually. Pero, mas maganda na if you're working on big data already, like sobrang laki talaga, and they're stored on data warehouses or yung mga relational databases, then definitely SQL is a must. But, it's also an edge that if you also know Python, you'd be able to automate some of the things that you need to automate, even if you already know SQL. SQL, Python, pag magunong ka na, you can also try other tools like mga business intelligence tools, mga data visualization tools like Tableau, Looker Studio, Power BI, para mas effective yung pagkakommunicate mo ng iyong mga insights from your data. Next question is from Nico Robin TV. Ooh, we have a One Piece fan here. Hey, bro, is it possible to become a data scientist with information technology course? I'm a first year student and want to focus on machine learning, mathematics, and other skill set that need to be a data scientist. The answer, of course, is yes. Simple as that. If you have an IT degree or a ComSci degree, I feel like it's a lot easier for you to be in this field because you know the ins and outs of how a computer behaves. So, yeah, the answer is yes. Next question is from Richard Pineda. Is a bachelor's degree a requirement in getting a data analyst job? Ah, that's, this is a good question actually. Depends on companies, but you know what? A lot of big tech companies are actually trying to disrupt the college degree requirement. Basically, yung iba kailangan mo lang really talaga is like a certification, like say from Google. You just need to take like their certification na six months lang, and then once that you have that certification, you can apply to Google and get a job. And honestly, you don't need a bachelor's degree for that. It helps if you have a bachelor's degree because hindi lang naman yun yung ticket mo to having a job in data science or in tech. Having a bachelor's job is a safety net already for you to be able to get a job anywhere else or in or on that field of specialization on your bachelor's degree. Diba? Because honestly, we don't know what life will throw at us. So, you know, having a bachelor's degree is definitely a safety net, at least for now. But again, yung mga big tech companies, they're really trying to disrupt that requirement. Glad to know that it's it's actually, for me, okay siya. Kasi minsan, hindi mo naman talaga kailangan ng piece of paper or a diploma. You really just need to showcase your skills. Because in tech, you need to showcase what you can do. It's not about your paper, your degree. So the next question is that, iba po ba yung data analyst and data scientist? If yes, yung mga tips po ba dito sa video can be applied to both fields. I've already explained it just a while ago. It's it's still very encompassing. The word data science itself for me, it's it's a general term and it encompasses anything as long as you're working on data, science, not exclusively machine learning. As long as you're working with technology and data, then for me it's still data science. Next question is from Data Geek and Hi sir, can you work with international tech companies remotely here in the Philippines? Yes, madaming gumagawa nito and it doesn't have to be in the data science sector. Even yung mga VAs, mga social media strategists, some of the companies are not even here in the Philippines and they work here. 
and the company would be in the US or in Europe or in Australia and because of the technology landscape right now it's really possible to do remote shop okay so the last question is a bit of a juicy question this is from Steph Robles and sabi niya, thank you for this sir curious lang how much po for salary ninyo as a data scientist should I disclose it? No, I will not disclose it. Pero, masasabi ko is, yung first salary ko as a data scientist or as a geospatial analyst, enough siya for me to be able to eat three times a day, to buy my other needs, to pay for my rent when I was still in BGC. Ang nagagawa ko pa rin yung mga gusto ko, nakakapag-travel ako, nakakabili ako ng mga bagay na gusto ko, tas nalalagay ko siya sa wishlist ko. My channel is also a personal finance channel, so if you want to check them out, I'll put a link here on, on this video on the playlist on about like credit, about budgeting. Pretty much it's enough, but I wouldn't say na hindi siya kasing luxurious kagaya ng iniisip ninyo, okay? Yeah, hindi siya tulad ng mga US tech companies na gahabi talaga, as in, sino talaga first year pa lang nila doon sa tech company, mayaman na agad sila. So, no, that's not the case for me, but at least I'm able to live comfortably and hindi ako yung nagdedread na bakit ang lilit lang sa auto or bakit uh, No, I'm very much satisfied actually with what I've earned before and what I'm earning right now. So, there's a level of satisfaction there. So, yeah, I think that's it for my video. Most of the questions here naman medyo related sila sa isa't isa. But if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below in this video or in any of my data science related videos and I'd be glad to answer them and maybe who knows I'm gonna make a part two of this video and again thank you very much for watching so if you find value in this video please do not forget to hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel and click the bell button beside it so that you will be notified whenever I have a new video all right so remember always that the more you learn the more you earn see you on my next video see you on my next video guys peace out